All right, uh, we're about to queue into Kitana Ravel. Ravel. Uh, we just did all the story in Raktika Greatwood, which has one of the best songs on the soundtrack about Ebola and Daddios. Um, the story was pretty good, I thought. Like, I'm enjoying finding out about this uh, Emmett guy, the founder of the Garlean Empire. Uh, I really liked the little... In fact, I think the little trap dungeon you do where you have to be stealthy and hide from the robots. Like, I wish this game had more stuff like that because it managed to do storytelling and dialogue and explaining stuff while I was playing a game, right? Rather than interfacing with a visual novel. But given that Final Fantasy XIV's direction is visual novel, it's an exceptionally well-written one so far, and all of the main quests I've seen have been very good. Um, so I'm kind of excited to see where they're going to take it after this one. I have three thoughts. Nice. In no particular order. Only three. One, I'm totally on board with charismatic Kefka Arden, uh, <laughs> the, the Emmett guy. I think that yeah. he's... I'm on his team. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think he's going to betray us. And I want to see his version of the future. Two, I am totally on board with the furry relationship that I just witnessed between uh, Ishtola and uh, not Zevron. So I think that needs to happen. And it's it, yeah. uh, it might be awakening something inside me. <laughs> Three, and most importantly, in, in that cutscene with, with Ranjit, uh, at the very end, Thancred clearly, clearly uses the rescue ability in an offensive capability. That I don't, you guys may not have known this, but when he pulls him across that gap, that was the rescue animation. You can't add me on that. <laughs> when do I get to use rescue on enemies? Would you use it to pull him into? Absolutely, <laughs> pull him into. I don't know what. I don't know what, but it, we need to, to have it happen. Nice. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes. It's great so far. Uh, I don't know. It's It just feels it feels like a story. I was talking about this in Discord a bit that there's a lot of things that happen in Realm Reborn especially. It gets a lot better in Heavensward and Stormblood where like, they'll plant something and then it never really pays off. Or you'll do something that isn't ever really relevant to the main story, like the famous getting the cheese to set the table so you can go fight Titan thing. That doesn't seem to be the case in Shadowbringers. Shadowbringers has a lot of little plants. Like, I don't think they've paid off yet. Uh, we had this scene where we had to basically baptize ourselves in the Church of the Dark. And there's this like throwaway line where they're like, oh, it's like tingly. And it's like, oh, maybe you're a Sin Eater. Ah, uh, no, that can't be true. Da, 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 da. And like stuff like that, you're like, okay, I know that the way that Shadowbringers has been constructed so far, that's going to have to pay off later. And it makes it so I'm more excited to pay attention to the little silly things like, let's go get baptized because I know that it's going to matter. <laughs> Whereas in Realm Reborn, they would they would occasionally have plants that paid off, but they'd often have stuff that was just a complete dead end. So you're just a really confused consumer, like, Am I, is this an important cutscene, or is this just dumb? So I feel like nothing is dumb so far. No spoilers, but when we sniffed the Chocobo way back when, that's super important coming up. It's like the most... <laughs> we got to find Laurentius 11 times. He's going to come back, knock on the door collect the dung and <laughs> storm blood. We're going to try this with two tanks because Gunbreaker seems pretty fun and has decent DPS. Yeah. But I'll, uh, I'll run tank stats. Tank, tank is poor DPS. I've had somebody quote that at me. Are you, are you going <laughs> to stay tank stance on or are you just going to be a poor DPS? Well, <laughs> I think we've determined now that Gunbreaker is pretty okay DPS. Seems to be the consensus. Um, Ninja is also favorite. not supposed to be that great at the moment, I hear. Oh, yeah. Just some of raid parses. Well, I mean, it's always been the... I'm going to be the lowest DPS because I get for five trick attack. And now Dancer is the lowest because it provides the thing with Ninja being, like, second highest. It's just that they're a lot of work for maybe yeah, not... The work. payoff isn't, yeah. isn't necessarily that great. Similarly with Summoner, they're, like, a lot of button pushing for damage that's, like... I could just be playing Red Mage. Yeah. Yep. Push, like, Comparable to a class that doesn't have to work for it, sure. Ninja feels good and looks good, but I, I do kind of agree with that comment. Mm. There's conspicuous hide behind rocks, okay. <laughs> 
That's just laser safety. I can tell you all about it. He's fucking out, oh. man. Break your line of sight. It's a cool mechanic if they're teaching us through the boss later. I like the motif in this expansion. It's in this song, the do 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 do. It's also in the Rocktea Greatwood song. I've always had a soft spot for the like motif-based soundtracks in the Final Fantasy series. Um, Bumatsu started really doing that with six. Have you guys messed around with trust at all yet? Nope. Not me. I did, uh, I primarily did them to beat the main story quest, and mm -hmm. I have not gone back to re-level them. I've been mm -hmm. reading a lot about how it takes a fair amount of effort to re-level them now. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer. Like, I guess if you finish the main story quest, it resets them all to level 70, and the only way you get them back up like, you, you, you could do Holminster Switch right away, but you can't go and do any of the other dungeons through Trust anymore until you level them up. And you're doing, you're like repeating the same dungeons tens of times, or maybe even dozens of times. Yeah, it sounds like, uh, since it seems to be, it takes two classes to level up at the rate they level up. Does that make mm. like, if you have two guys at 70, and I want to get Thancred through enough levels of the first dungeon. It takes like two DPS at 70, leveling through that range. It's because they were all lazy and then they switched jobs. <laughs> they didn't get their main job at 80, so they don't get the army bonus. Great, yep. Oh, but there's a very important detail. Apparently, you get to glamour them for a outfit swap when you get them back to max level. So there's your carrot. If you want to look right, at Thancred like he did in Realm Reborn instead of his current outfit. Oh no, they... God. <laughs> like, I feel like they gotta do the opposite. They gotta put them in their old outfits and then you have to unlock these ones again. Yeah. And they get that Urian J outfit where he looks like a rando. I'll probably, I don't know, I think Trust is kind of fun. Um, there's also a little bit of extra story, like the <clears throat> NPCs have some comments, especially in like Holminster Switch, if you bring Alice and Alphano with you. Pretty good at the mechanics. I still failed that the final boss of the Ilmeg dungeon, Don't Meg or whatever, like the thing that it does where you have to walk the tightrope, I, I cannot do it on controller for some reason. <laughs> um, I think I figured it out when I ran it in, in Trust that like, so usually when I get a puzzle like that in a 3D game, my default thing to do is to point the camera so it's like top down. Uh, so I can just give it straight forward, left, right, without having to worry about the third dimension. And that doesn't work with the legacy camera in this game. Because whenever you turn, it turns the whole camera when it's pointed straight down like that. So if anyone else plays with the controller and with keeps the... tying on that, that's why. Uh, that's how I turn the camera for keyboard and mouse, but then, you know, keyboard and mouse, so... Oop, wrong I side. see. Uh, that's a fun way to twist on this idea. I'm just giving Pat something to do. Exactly. Nice. Yeah, thanks. I thought after <laughs> Matt joked about giving me back something to do, that Flare Wing was in a pop Super Bowl I'd... <laughs> Oh, that's right. I I'll just, that I'll just a little Dark Knight. 
and uh, <laughs> next time we'll run three, three, three tanks, and I'll just living dead randomly, and then stand in all the AOEs. <laughs> that would be a fun game for Pat to figure out when he needs to heal me back to full. Didn't you just put up some kind of a heal on me based on your warrior damage? So maybe we can just run four tanks. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. We just throw that ability on everybody. I do generally try to be good about Heart of Stone and aurora the the main tank when I'm off tanking. But maybe a little bit of extra heals and shields. I like the skill cap from the thing that Apex was just describing about putting a buff on the person. It only lasts six seconds though, so you don't get a lot of value out of it. Biolysis? That's me. Stone Fist. Probably a tank buster if the formula holds true. Yes, very much so. Subtle Scorn. Probably could have guessed that. Okay. Great damage. All right, he's got a, a glowing statue back here. Oh, thanks. Good call. Ah. <laughs> My camera was not facing that. <laughs> Heat up. Oh, that's cool. Probably the side that's on fire. Uh, a little AOE flash. Nice. Oh, count. Stone fist. Actually, I forgot to lolly the boss at first. We're going to need to wipe start over. Yeah. Oh, no. Heat up is probably going to highlight another side. Don't be on that yeah. side. Also, raid damage. Uh oh, and the statue is on the other other side. He's turning. Oh, interesting. Okay. So you have to both be not on the side of his body and not on the totally of the out. statue. Gotcha. Stone Fist. Alright, so you gotta move again? Yeah, probably. No statue. Oh, there's a statue. There it is. I'm gonna try to turn yeah. him. Okay. Yeah. Clever. I'm seeing more and more speculation that energy drain has to be coming back for Scholar. Oh yeah. Yeah. It seems like that's like a really easy thing to do, and they they brought back Miasma two, I guess, or they added Miasma two during patches, and uh... I guess the intent is Strong to blue. do those kind of adjustments. When Savage comes mm -hmm. out. I know they made Art of War way cheaper, which is nice. Oh, good. I can actually use it, it with all my sound effects. I don't know if I like it. All my Gunbreaker sound effects sound more like a thwomp, and they were a shwink. More bass heavy, but not necessarily in the best way. Some are good. Amazing how the little things matter. Say so change the Viera 7 voice, but I haven't played with any Viera, so I don't know how bad it was. It sounded like Sideshow Bob standing on the rake. <laughs> Whenever you wow. attack. Which I was gonna make character and just play that Sideshow Bob life, but now they ruined it. I've seen a lot of people have fantasia into bunny girls. Yeah. Quite a bit. That's fine. I guess I don't want to say things about it and then offend if I have anyone that I know that switched to a bunny girl. But good for you. Glad you got your thing. I mean, not everyone wants to be a blueberry girl like you, so. That's true. That's fair. 
It's reasonable. Soreness was mentioning that uh, he started trying the game out. And I was thinking about it later, and I tagged him, and I was like, what percentage of you checking this game out had to do with the fact you can play as a Ronso now? And he's like, I refuse to comment. <laughs> uh, I haven't seen terribly many of the Hrothgar. I've seen a lot less than the Bunny Girls, but more than I thought. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, a def there's a population of, of WoW folks that I think really do enjoy it. What it seems that's yeah that makes now. sense i feel like we need more either monstrous or extremely not human races but i also get why they don't do that because it makes it really hard to design new armors when you've got people complaining all the time about their cat ears clipping through their helmets and That's part of why they added upright orc to World of Warcraft, that they were just making armor that looked really bad on orcs. Unless if you switch to this upright stance. game now officially has the highest Metacritic score of any game released in 2019, including Sekiro. Wow, really? All that. Yeah. Yeah. People are very it happy with it. Particularly impressive, given that, like, I feel like the review industry is more brutal than they normally are to MMOs, and have been pretty brutal to Japanese games for a while. Yeah. Deservedly so, in most cases, I think. Is Sekiro number two? I think so. I think Sekiro's got a 91, oh. and this is a 92. I feel like like 94 is the new 100. Like We're never going to see another game crest 94. It has to be have been released in like 2000 or prior. I have paid attention. What did like God of War or Breath of the Wild get? Breath of the like Wild, probably. I think uh, Mario Odyssey may have done 95. Let's see. Uh. Oh, you know, I take it back. Breath of the Wild was in 97. It's probably fair, wow, like. Yeah. A number of things you can say uh, that are bad about it. 94 to 97. Like, I hate those kind of. Like, what? Yeah, right. It's in it's arbitrary. It come down exactly. There's a variance there that we can't ever see. Yeah. Basically. But with Metacritic, it's interesting because you can kind of see the difference between a, you know, at least in five percent bins, you can tell the difference between like a, a ninety and a eighty-five, because we're looking at the aggregated results of many, many critics and many, many user reviews. There's, I forget who does it, but one YouTube channel I saw the ratings based on a buy, rent, don't buy system. That was, yeah, I like no. that. that Fuck, Mary kill. There you go. Mm. Which <laughs> radiation like do you eat, put in your pocket, <laughs> and throw away? Yeah. Kotaku was doing a good one for a while where they were just listing, here are things we liked, here are things we didn't like. No score at the end. Oh, then it ended with, should you get it, yes or no? To me, it's kind of like doing a statistical analysis with, like, it's not like you're doing an ANOVA that you guys do that. It's like doing a repeated measure of ANOVA in a weird-ass way. Because each, the first few scores influence the latter scores for this kind mm -hmm. of in a weird mm -hmm. way that you don't expect by just having an N equals 400 scores. So yeah, it's like if you did another complete universe rating this game, all the same things. The memes that came out in the first fifty scores might be different in the impact of variance, right? Yeah, I see your point. Genius boss. 
in the Bat game. Squish. <laughs> I was going to say my new this favorite. This is what took them 90% of their development time was Koji thinking, what pun can I name this? That or one day right before he went to lunch, like, Koji, we need this boss name. He's like, oh, fuck, I don't know. Bat Squatch, I'm out. Done. <laughs> Done. Let's got some cool hieroglyphics in this room. Wow, oh, sorry. <laughs> Five seconds. Go with four. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dead. It's fine. EPS adjust. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, Ripper Fang is the tank buster. Next ability might be the raid damage. Soundwave. Yep. Yeah, I kind of like Got that it. though. Because if that's the formula, the first two moves it uses tank buster and then raid damage. You know right away when it gets used later in the fight. Subsonics. Huh. Uh. Huh. It's a bunch of raid damage, and then it spawns a stalactite. Oh, but it started as zero damage, like something it ramped up. Yeah. Oh, it's like uh, that raid. Hashmal. Don't let the pillars fall on your face. I'm a healer now, too. Gerbs. <laughs> Oh, maybe it starts at zero damage because that's how it You're shielded. behaves with my shield, yeah. Each hit is small enough that the shield ignores some of it. Gonna land on. Oh, nice. Good dodge. I was watching him. <laughs> Finally watched him. <laughs> I really like the store two charges mechanic on every move that they've given it to me on. Yeah, I agree. Gives them some good design space for some of these moves. Yeah. It feels great on Ninja. It's, it's under-talked about how useful Kisatsu is. Now, I imagine, though, that in practice, like, uh, most of the time, as far as raids go, not that we care about raids, but, like, you're probably going to use both charges with the Alpha Strike at the beginning of the pull, and then after that, you're just using it on cooldown, and it's effectively the same as having one charge. Is that true, or are there any abilities that y'all have that are situational enough that you can build all the charges back up. True North. True North. I mean, at least on Dragoon, there are instances where, like, in Titania X, for example, I know I'm going to be on her side for a good rotation's worth of buttons. So I'll pop True North, and sometimes I'll pop it twice in a row, but then I don't need it for a while mm -hmm. to, to keep hitting the positionals. I have my uh, my leap move from tanking that it's a DPS increase to use it every time it comes up as an off level cooldown, but because the purpose of the, the extra DPS for a tank isn't all that great, so it's useful to keep one in the bag for movement. But, Any more saviors? So I dig that. 
Homemaster Switch kind of sets this expectation for the player that, all right, this expansion's about Sin Eaters and Light Wardens. Uh, got it. And then the very next dungeon is Crazy Frog Fairy World. <laughs> and, like, the Primal is a Light Warden, sort of, but really it's Titania that's got Light Warden powders, powers in her, so they're already finding ways to play around with it after the very first dungeon. Instead of, they, they could have rested on their laurels and just kind of made you know, white holy variants of all the enemies we know and love so far. Like this nature bomb in front of us. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, cool, we got a little Yeti's throwing shit at us up there. They've, they've done some pretty great stuff with reskinning, like... Pretty good chunk of the enemies in the open world are reskinned known models that we've seen before, but I think they look quite good. They added a couple enemies from Final Fantasy XI that I don't think have been in any other games in the series that give me PTSD. <coughs> Like how the Giga Tenders look in their name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. I do uh, face numbering. I guess I do. I'm I was 30 away. Earlier. 30 away from our free company house, always having Ebola. <laughs> <laughs> something else in the story that I didn't talk about at the beginning but talked about in Discord a bit and it's like I've complained before about Final Fantasy 14 like using resurrection too much like teasing a character dying and then surprise bringing them back it's happened I think in the double digits at this point some of them are worse than others like Nanamo coming back I think is one of the worst ones they did because they really played that up hard at the end of ARR and they're like surprise it's fine um, but I started to complain about Ishtola in this one, because it felt like it was going to be that again. I go, no, she fell down a pit. Let's be sad for a cutscene. But they only spent like one MSQ step on it, and then it ended up serving a purpose to tell us about the capabilities of the Emmett Garlean Asian guy. So, like, at least it did something, you know? I still kind of wish they wouldn't do that, but. Well, it clues you into the, the nascent love of Bronzo guy. Uh huh. I mean, yeah, that, that was sense. the most important part of the. Because <laughs> you shipped that. Yeah. It did something. It, it served a purpose. It wasn't just there to get you stressed out. In fact, it was almost shot in a way that you're supposed to. It's like, you know, Dragon Ball Z or something. You know that she's fine. Because the main, the big villain guy, Ranjit, falls in too, and there's no way he's dying in a cutscene at level 74. Like, right. Um. But I guess, like, I was trying to clarify this in Discord that, like, I, I don't mind if there's a story where no one is ever in any peril. That's fine. Um, and I don't mind if there's a story where people are in real peril. It just bums me out when you do a story where, they, like, you're telling the player that they should buy that these characters are dead. And then they never really are. Because um, I feel like Dragon well, Ball Z is a great example. Whenever someone dies in Dragon Ball, you're like, oh, they're coming back. It's fine. Like, they died for now. Our, but... our boy Papa, he's gone. You just I want some alpha so. today. I, 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 I hope he died like a heaven sword. If they're if they're <laughs> yeah. pulling him back, they're doing the long long con. Yeah, they'll bring him back as uh, as Phoenix Two or something, Mega Phoenix. That was the setup they were going for. I thought after Luisa. Come 
Whoa. That's pretty cool. Oh man, I like the mask. Eros, huh. Well, this boss design is lovely. Yeah. Oh. See what I did there? You see, <laughs> see what, I, what I was able to do with that? It's good. It's good. Okay, I'll actually pull it one this time instead of immediately. Friend is probably the tank buster. Yes. And then raid damage. Probably. Hound out of heaven. Oh, no, but it's tethered to somebody. Maybe not. Okay. Not a hard and fast roll. There are also Glossolalia. no lasers in boss fights. Glossolalia was the raid damage. So I still don't think we've met a boss yet that doesn't have both of those things. Since, since Shadowbringers, maybe sometime in Stormblood. Inhale. Oh, it's like uh, Cerberus. Oh god. Okay. Pushed into the goop? Okay, that's... That was more bang. Tough. Looks like it can be as soon as the... Tank Buster. of faith. Hmm. Brought that to me. I know. I'll heal you and make tank. up for it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Heaven was the tether to one person. It looks like they have to move away from the boss. Uh, I got a ball from that as though I could have dodged it. I think we need to be further away from it. Yeah. So you can get inhale will pull you into the poison and then this thing can push you, but I don't think touching the wall is bad. Yeah, okay. So if you can move after the one in the middle and gets pushed into the back wall, it's fine. Tank buster. for another Glossolalia here soon. I'm just gonna run away from him if you're tethered. Now it still got me. Hmm. It's always gonna hit you. But it'll you do less damage the farther away you are. I guess you didn't are. get the Volt stack that time. Yeah. I did get the Volt stack. It less the less long. Stack. Stack. Fossil Alley, I read damage. More read damage. Stuttered somebody. Right, so no, no Vuln stack there. Tank Buster. On Gunbreaker, do you have a super short cooldown, damage reduction cooldown as well? I like have fewer a, than 30 uh, seconds? Yeah, I do. It's uh, Heart of Stone at 25. It gives me yeah. 50% for me or a party member. It's the basic equivalent of, I guess, the. it's my Blackest Knight that's a little more simple. Mm. It's my Sheltron without an Oath Gauge cost, so it's pretty good, actually. I have one at 25 seconds, too, which is... We haven't really had that on Warrior before. Basically, you can have it up for every Tank Buster. 
Yeah, that's it's comfy to use. It is. I, I usually like to use mine in conjunction with my region because they're both about regions about 60 seconds, but they're they're really short cooldowns. They're always up. Mm -hmm. It seemed plenty fast with you on Gunbreaker. If you keep wanting to do all of these on GB, that's fine by me. We'll see. I may, uh, I may get my machinist far, and then we can double flamethrower stuff. There you go. All the bio blasters. Yeah. Still looking sad. Everyone should pass on the things that dropped. Your good old boy Pat. <laughs> Them cast gears, that'd be great. There's a book and a ring. Oh, nice. What? Where's my uh, where's my healers? Well, you'll automatically get something from beating the dungeon. Oh, I guess so. Cool. And we'll see. Uh, weather and night cycles return to their Actica Greatwood. I think we'll be back with whatever the next instance is next week. Thanks, folks.